now let's 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 be real here. Let's try to recap a little bit of what we've learned to date and 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 make it applicable to what we're talking about right now. We're talking about content. Now, the first couple of weeks we talked about peso. We defined paid, earned, shared, and owned. What do y'all think the common, what's the common thread other than, well, I'm just going to ask this out loud. What is the common thread that aligns paid, earned, shared, and owned media? What is that one common thread? Content. Oh my gosh. Yes. Who was that? Julia. Julia, you get an A for today. Yes. (laughs) Content is that, it's the, it's the, it's that asset that you use to tell those stories in those channels. Now, the way that you do go about doing it is different for paid, right? And we talked about that. It's different for earned. You know, you don't have control over it. It's different for owned. You have complete control over it, but most people don't care. And, and it's the shared, right? It's, it's that, hold on, somebody is requesting. Oh, was that a chat or did somebody try to get in? Hold on. Oh, here we go. Elisa, are you back in? Okay, I think you need new, a new internet provider. Just kidding. Sorry about that. That's right. You know, in my last class, I would crack jokes and no one laughed for like the first like month and a half, two months. Then, then everybody would, I, I kind of warmed up to people. So hopefully that'll happen here. All right, so content, right? So content is that asset that you create uh, based on the medium, right? The medium being the channel, the channel living within paid, earned, and owned. And I'm going to talk about the different types of content because the reality is, is that there are hundreds of different types of content there and and they could be categorized in many different ways. So think, for example, long form content versus short form content. Can anybody tell me what the difference is between long form content and short form content? Anybody? Um, It's just that short form is quicker to consume. Than long form. That's a good. That's, that's a good. That's good. Anybody else? Um, couldn't short form be kind of like a tweet, and then long form maybe be like a blog or a website? Exactly. Who was that? Julia. Okay, <laughs> Julia, you're just scoring some points today. <laughs> Honestly, like I can't see anybody because I'm pre- in present presentation mode, so I don't see the little you know the little faces on the video screen. So yes, that's exactly what it is. Long form content is our articles, blogs you know, 250, 300, 500, a thousand words. And you know, it's, it's a, it's a listicle. It's a thought it's Buzzfeed, right? It's, it's fortune, it's Forbes. And then short form is just that it's the tweet. It's the status update. It's the Instagram post, but even then you can categorize it even further, right? There's visual storytelling, which can anybody explain what they think visual storytelling is? Like videos, uh, graphics and all that. Exactly. Exactly. So but I want to talk about the types of content, right? So what, is, what, what do these mean? And I stole this from the internet and I don't, didn't know who it's from. So if you own this, uh, this slide that I stole and I, you know, I apologize, I'm not referencing you, um, but I think it's pretty standard. It's nothing, you know, groundbreaking. However, um, this is, and I have the wrong title up here. Oh my God, I'm embarrassed. Hold on. I can never type when people are watching me. Does anybody else have that problem? Like when somebody's, but like you, you, you know, somebody's behind your back and just watching you type. I just get mixed spelling errors all the time. All right. Depression. Okay. What is content? Okay, so this is all different types of content. Okay, I'm going to talk through each of these. Now, there's. The majority of this type of content that we're looking at right now is based on uh, B2B. So when I say B2B, I mean business to business. It's companies like Intel who sells their software and hardware to uh, HP or Apple or any computer manufacturer. It's companies like Splunk who sells software uh, to manage data to other companies like IB, uh, well, IBM is a competitor, but you know, so it's, it's these large technology companies that we're surrounded by here in the Valley and they are selling software to each other. So that's B2B. Now there's other types of B2B, right? There's, you know, if you think about the construction industry, you know, they're all of the tractors and, you know, the, uh, you know, helmets and safety equipment that that's all B2B 
sales and B2B marketing. So my experience for the most part is in, is in, te in tech companies. So when you think about like content though, for like consumer brands, like if you work in fashion or you work for, you know, you're interested in sports and you work for a Nike or Adidas or, you know, what's a fashion brand? I don't know. Maybelline. Are they even still around anymore? Maybelline. Are they a thing? No, I don't know. But, okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, Sephora yeah, then. Yeah. Sephora, Bobby Brown, you know, the makeup that my, my daughter, I look at my, uh, yeah, I don't even want to go there. She spends way too much money. So, um, so, so that, that type, those brands also do content like this. Now, they don't really do white papers though, right? They're not going to do eBooks and white papers and reports. And, you know, they may have a podcast. They're not going to, and they probably have newsletters, but usually the newsletters are for sales, right? So they're selling product through email. I don't know how many of you, you know, subscribe to any of, you know, like Nike, I get Nike emails all the time and I, you know, I buy things. Um, but, you know, they'll do videos. They don't really do thought leadership unless it's an executive. So the majority of these are, are, are B2B companies. And I'm going to talk and show you some examples of, of each of those types of content. <clears throat> so the first thing I wanna show you, if you guys can see my screen, can you guys still see my screen? What do you guys see? Yes, we can see it. What do you, what do you actually see? The website. 65%. Okay, what, what do you guys think this is? I'm just gonna scroll up and down. What, what, what would you classify this piece of content as? Infographic. Exactly. Exactly. This is an infographic, right? It's a visual way to, to display a ton of data, right? And, and infographics are great because there's a lot of great data points here. Look, 72% of, of CEOs believe the next three years will be more critical for their industry than the previous 50 years, right? And they're talking about transformative technologies, okay? There's a data point over here. There's some talking points here. There's examples here. There's some stock photography here. It looks like this was sponsored or created by IBM, um, we can look at the bottom. There's more data points here. Now, the thing with this at a very tactical level, this is all one image. Like this is not a bunch of images. Like if I were to right click and save image as, there you go. That is the infographic. It's like two miles long. Right. And, you know, you can zoom in and, and see all the different pieces. Okay. That's, that's an infographic. It typically lives on a website, right? How would you share? Can anybody tell me how you would share this infographic on social media? Is it possible to do that? I mean, it's like, I don't think. Maybe it's like an album on Instagram where it's like chopped up and you see the next part on the next side of the album. Uh, who was that? Me, Antonio. Antonio, dude, that's exactly where I was going. And it's actually a best practice. So let's take for, for uh, example, this post here. Okay, this is a tweet. And let's just watch this video for a second. It's starting right now. So 88% of blah, 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 blah. There's some data points there. There's some data points there. And it's, it's, it's one data point, right? And it's, it's part of a larger infographic. So the idea being is you can package up these, these infographics. I call this an infogram, right? It's, it's rather than, uh, you know, one graphic with a ton of data points. It's, this is one graphic with one data point that could link back to the larger infographic if it made sense. So this is, I would call this shareable content that is easy to, you know, produce and distribute in social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or I even see these, you know, on Instagram and it's just one data point. And it's, and this is the type of content that B2B pros and, you know, developers and designers, just, they love this stuff. They love those, those key insights. And they're not going to, if you try to post a, you know, an infographic that's 20 feet long, you know, you're, I don't even think it would work. Honestly, if you tried to do it, it just wouldn't fit. Right. So this is an infogram. Okay, it's, it's social media content. I would call it shareable. It's, it's, you know, and if we're looking at this infographic, look at all these other data points. There's a data point here. There's data here. There's data here, here, here. Here, here. I see six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, 20. There's literally 20 data points on here that you can create unique pieces of content. And to your point, Antonio, you can upload them as an album on LinkedIn, by the way. That drives a lot of engagement on LinkedIn for, for, for company pages. And, uh, you know, in fact, I'm going to 
that's a great, let me just go there because I think we're learning in real time here. <clears throat> I'm going to go to an old client automation anywhere. And show you what they do with their They recently posted a bunch of images that when you looked at it in the feed, it was, it looked, it looked, it created some interesting graphic, but then when you clicked on it, it was something else. It was really cool how they did this. I'll get there in a minute. Scrolling. Oh, here we go. Okay. So they, you know, you click on it, it's an image, right? And then you just go to the next image. Right, and it's 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 words. It's not very visual, but it's a, the for, this is a form of, you know, a, a visual storytelling. Right, I probably would have added people, but again, this is their brand, and they know know the brand better than I do. So, um, that's example of of what you just said, Antonio, which is which is you know uploading multiple images to one post. Now we talked about video. Many of you, how many of you you watch YouTube videos? Right, have you ever has anybody ever seen a video like this? And th there's no talking. And it's usually some type of video in the background. You know, it could be stock for stock video or stock photography. And then there's like these white captions or black captions that pop out and, and it, you know, it gives data points or it tells a story. Has anybody ever seen videos like this? Um, me. I mostly see it on Facebook. Okay. Interesting. I only see these on, on, on Twitter, but this is what I would call a storytelling video. And a lot of brands are doing this. And what, what, what they do is because video is the key driver in engagement in social media, it's the number one consumed digital content on the internet video. Uh, you know, people are, are figuring out different ways to use video to tell stories. Now it could have been like some executive just talking, right? It could have been a guy saying, yeah, the results they produce will be biased too. This could affect who gets hired if computers are used to sort job applications or you know, somebody could be talking behind a video and honestly, that could be effective. Now, what they're doing in this particular instance is for people who are at work and have their volume turned off, this is a great way to tell stories and not have to have your volume on. You can just watch it and you can read it and it's very short and succinct. We've talked a lot about headlines. Notice when you look at each of these, let me pause it, that right here, that is a headline. And you know what they have? Is this, a, is this a grammatical error? No, it's not. It's a robot read, not read. A robot read 3.5 million books to see how we describe men and women differently. That's a headline. Beautiful, sexy, and gorgeous were used most often to describe women. Okay. Again, another headline, right? you have to approach every piece of content as if honestly, as if you're writing a tagline. A lot of people don't agree with that, by the way. But if you, we, we live in this multi content, multimedia world. And if you want to grab attention, you have to write every piece of content, every headline, every blog post, every tweet, every status update, every caption on Instagram has to be thought of as a tagline. You have to do it that way. <clears throat> so this is a video that, you know, this is an MP4 file. So, you know, uh, David, I know you know what that is, um, but that's, you know, you can create a, an animated GIF like this. It's just not as effective. And MP4 files or .mov files are usually driving more engagement than other types of files anyway. So, let's see. All right, let's go to the next piece of content. Oh, here we go. Okay. So looking at this, anybody know what Slack is? Slack. Okay. Again, I, let me, I'm going to move you guys over. Hold on. There we go. The family. Hold on. It's a, it's a communication app for like business use mostly, right? Exactly. It's a way to communicate, right? I aming and whatnot. So what do you notice about this ad that's, that's different? And just anybody, Re I mean, read the words, look at the creative. What, what do you notice that's, that's just not off, but just different or unique? It has a very B2B feel. Okay. Why do you say that? Um, because I think they do understand that Slack is for people that are involved in, you know, companies that make money. Um, 
and it's also like a conference and a workshop and networking they know they're reaching a certain audience um that is not like a fun audience it's people who want to learn and you know connect dude i gotta it's funny you say that i i recently wrote a did a video about b2b influencers having abs because, you know, if you think about like consumer influencers, like, the, you know, the fashionistas and the Kim mm-hmm. Kardashians of the world and all that, like they all have abs, right? And, and they all get a lot, they, you know, consumer influencers get a lot of attention in the media, right? Ad week yeah. writes about them, you know, business. And stuff. Nobody talks about, about technology influencers. And I said something along the lines of like, B2B influencers have abs. I have abs. You just can't see them, right? But they're there. I, I promise you they're there. So but 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 what, what what I was hoping that you would see from this is that this little button down here, this is an ad. They are targeting me. I now I am not a buyer, like I don't buy software for my company, but I use software like this. And we do have fun, dude. Okay. We're, it's not that we're no fun, it's just that we want to drive business and drive sales. So um, but what what I wanted you to kind of see about this ad is that. It's, it's a, what I would call, it's a, it's a lead gen ad, meaning if I were to click on this, right, they don't want me to like it. They don't want me to comment on it. They don't want me to share it. They want me to click on it. They're, they're basically advertising an event. So when I click on register, it's going to open up to a new browser and it's going to give me the opportunity. Now, this is not smart because it's telling me to click on register again. If they were smart, they would have linked me to this page which would then require me to fill out my information. Okay, so, they're, so whoever did this wasn't thinking correctly and they're probably not getting a lot of registrations because once you get here, it's like, okay, why do I wanna click again? You know, if you've, you targeted me and you want me to click on this ad, I wanna be able to fill out my information and move on in, in my day. But this is, so they're, they're trying to collect an email address. This is, a great, this is a great example of what B2B companies do. They provide value in the form of events or white papers or ebooks. In, and in order for you to receive it or attend, you need to give them your information because the minute you submit your email address, it's going to go to somebody in sales and they're going to call you to see if they can sell you their software. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So let's go here. Now I'm going to migrate. Where was it here? All right. This is funny because th- this is earlier today. I got, t- this is essentially another ad. So this ad is, it's simply, it's saying the same thing, same company Slack, but different colors. So I would, whoops, let me, I would bet that they are uh, A-B testing, right? They're seeing, are, can we get more clicks to our event page? when we use a green background versus a, I don't even know what color that is, teal maybe, background, or maybe they, they, they'll do red. Um, so this is what I would call social content, but it's used to drive traffic off of Twitter. They don't want you to engage here on Twitter. They want you to click and submit your email address. That is their goal. It's called lead gen. Some people call it demand gen. So um, let me move over to LinkedIn and look at what's happened here. They're targeting me here as well. So a little bit, what's interesting in this, I'm glad I got this example because notice what they're saying here, right? They're saying, close more deals faster. Sound good? We thought so. Now, honestly, I would leave that out. Don't get, if you're trying to drive leads, don't get cute. Just tell me what the value is. Tell me what I'm going to get. And, um, you know, I would, I would, delete this first sentence and just say, join us at Slack Frontiers, our free virtual event. Or I would say, join us at our free virtual event to hear how top sales leaders. Okay. So that's what they're saying here. And on LinkedIn, it's Slack is where five-star support happens. Refocus and rally your teams around your customers with key takeaways, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And they're, they're targeting me. This is promoted. So they're not, I don't follow Slack on LinkedIn. I don't follow them on Twitter, but they've, identified me as a potential buyer and they're, they're tagging me and it's the same situation. I click here. It's going to take me to that page where I have to click again, which again, isn't the best customer experience. You want to like, if you want to, you know, there's something in LinkedIn called 
um, one-click lead gen where you provide, I'm going to look for it as I explain that, where you provide some type of uh, content. And if you want access to that content, you click, um, you click, you know, get it or, or learn more. And it literally just collects your email address from LinkedIn and you get access to this uh, document, whatever it is you want, you're trying to get access to an ebook or a white paper. Okay, here we go. This is a, a great example. So this is Red Hat, it's a software company. And you know, this is great. It's short, it's succinct, it's like no BS, not a lot of jargon, just, hey, you need to address culture, process, technology. It's key to success. Do you want this actually, um, uh, looks like people, three essential elements of uh, a digital transformation. Now I assume it's a white paper. They don't say it's a white paper. They don't say it's a, you know, a, a, a blog post or ebook. But when I click download, Notice what happens. It pops up. I'm still in LinkedIn. I click, and that's my number. Um, I click submit, and then the person who owns the LinkedIn account for, for Red Hat will get a notification that, oh, Michael Brito, he just submitted his information. Again, it's going to go to sales. Um, and and th this is, again, lead gen content. And this is very important that you guys learn this because for those of you who are here in the, the Valley, you're probably going to work at some technology company. And if you understand kind of the concepts of, this type of content, you're, you're going to be that much more ahead. Now, this is one of my clients, Splunk. This is their blog. Okay, so um, when you click on, there, there's a, and it's very visual, and that's on purpose, right? Again, they're trying to overcome that, that perception of, you know, B2B people are like boring and old and whatnot. But um, so it looks really, I mean, it looks to me like it's a really visual piece. I'm going to click on this first blog post here. And this is actually a blog post written by their CEO, Doug Merritt. And he's talking about a report that they recently uh, uh, produced. And he, you know, he, he talks about some bullet points. You know, it's a very personal post and it's a very great, well-written post. Now, what he did was he linked to this. He said, welcome to the data age. And when you link to that, what's going to happen is it's going to go give you, take you to a place where you could download the full report. Okay. But what do you notice that, but the reality is, is if you want to download it, what happens? It takes me to this page. Download now. Now, I'm not going to judge Doug Merritt and what he wrote on a blog post, but if I were advising him, I would have told Doug, hey, maybe link to this post because you're, you're probably going to get more downloads by doing it this way versus the previous, previous way because, again, you want to eliminate the steps that it takes to, to ensure that somebody can have access to a piece of content that you are providing. Okay. So I'm going to actually do this because I've already downloaded this. So now they want more. And yes, I do get calls. I just ignore them. Salespeople should learn how to text. I would respond if they texted me. Okay. So I'm giving my entire life to my client. Now they already know this all about me, right? So now it's, it's basically saying, okay, here's your download. You can also get any of these other pieces of content. So when you click on it, it should open up into a PDF. There you go. Take a look at the URL. It's dataage.pdf and there's the report, right? It's a lot of words like, but it's a lot of data points. Like all of these things can be turned into social content. It could be turned into graphics on social media that can drive back to the report. Right. And in this case, this could be considered a, a report. This could be considered a white paper. It could be considered an ebook. It's basically a document that is meant to provide some type of value, whether it's data points or perspectives or thought leadership or trends or predictions. Typically, you know, that is something that you can collect email addresses from if you work within the B2B sector. Now, moving on to other types of content, this is, this is something that I posted. I think I might have shared this a while back. This is, I uploaded this directly to LinkedIn. And again, notice here that this is the only, um, you only see this in the, in the update. When you're scrolling, you're only going to see this first sentence. And if you click see more, that's when you see everything else, right? But you, I uploaded this PDF file, and I'm just going to double click here and show you what this is. So this is... Um, you know, it's a, it's an ebook or what, I mean, you can, again, you call it an ebook or white paper. It's, it serves the same purpose, but notice it's not a ton of content. Like the report had a lot of really small words. This isn't like that. This is less words, a little bit more visual. 
Again, words, visual, words, visual, and so on. And that's it. And Oreos. Oh, I love Oreos. There you go. So that is an example of an ebook. And there are companies that, that specialize in just creating long form content like that, right? In, in ebook form. You can actually, for those of you who are really creative, you can do these ebooks in like PowerPoint or like Google Docs. You, and they have templates. So if you wanted, like if I were, if I were you guys, I would, be, I would be producing, you know, these little reports or, you know, pieces on, on anything that you're interested in, anything, and design it in a cool way. And again, you, there, there's templates available on, on Google Doc temp store, as well as in PowerPoint or whatever, Keynote. And, you can, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an asset that you can put into the marketplace and use to engage with people. I built this ebook in probably an hour. This is a different ebook. There's also what's called case studies. So this is again, automation anywhere. And if you click on any of these case studies, it's going to open up into a new browser and it's going to, it's not going to require me to download anything. It's, you'll notice it's opening up into a, some type of PDF document and it's a really quick case study, right? It's who's the company, what the challenge is, what's the solution, the benefits that the company achieved from using automation anywhere software. And then that's it. And like the, the you know, one other page. And that's it. That's a case study. Done. Right. Um, okay. Let me get out of here. All right. So I'm going to go back to content and let's see here. All right. Any questions on content? Because we didn't like, I didn't talk about posts on Facebook, posts on Twitter, posts on Instagram or TikTok or anything like that, or stories or reels or whatever. Like we all kind of know what that is, right? That's just different ways that these platforms are letting and allowing their users to communicate. Any questions at all? And, and I feel like most of you probably know what those are because you are most likely users of those platforms. Are there any of you that want me to talk about like how to use TikTok and how to promote and, or, or post on TikTok or Snapchat? I can. Or is there anything on here that you see that you want me to talk about? You know, there are how-to guides. Again, that's kind of a form of an ebook. The uh, email newsletter, pretty self-explanatory. Podcast videos are self-explanatory. But I think I covered everything here. Are we good? I had a question on the thought leadership. I'm glad. Talk to me. I was just wondering what that what that was. I mean, I can guess, but I'm really not sure. That's a great. Who is this? Candace. Okay, Candace. Again, I, I can't seek something in presentation mode, but thought leadership is typically um, it's content that is not about the brand. So when and and this type of content works better than branded content for the most part. When I say branded content, I mean, buy our products. It's only cost this much. It'll help you scale beyond, you know, into different categories. It's very much about me. It's self-centered. It's self-serving content is, is branded content. And the reality is most, most buyers in B2B or policymakers or politicians, they don't care about that. But if you have a point of view on the future of AI, or the future of retail, or the future of working from home, and you provide perspectives on it, that is thought leadership, right? You're, you're, you're talking about a topic and or, uh, you're talking about a topic or something that is related. It, obviously, it has to be related to the business you're in. Like if I'm Slack and I'm the CEO of Slack, I'm probably gonna be talking about employee collaboration, right? Because Slack is a tool that helps employees talk. If I'm the CEO of um, Brandy Melville, and guys, that's the only thing I can think of because my daughter is obsessed with Brandy Melville. If I'm the CEO of Brandy Melville, am I going to talk about our clothes to other colleagues on LinkedIn? Oh yeah, our clothes, they fit, they're big and they, you know, we, you know, they have all these great, you know, I don't even know, I don't even like that clothing to be honest. But that's not, that wouldn't be thought leadership. Thought leadership is, 
okay, I'm the CEO or I'm an executive at Brandy Melville or Nordstrom or Macy's or whatever, and I'm talking about the future of retail or maybe COVID-19's effect on the future of retail and how brands and how retail brands need to adapt. Because it's, it, again, it's not about Brandy Melville, but it's about all of us collectively as retail brands adapting to COVID-19 and the fact that people don't want to go to malls much anymore or have not wanting to go to malls the last six months. You see, the, does that, do you see what I mean by the distinction between like a, a branded self-serving content versus thought leadership? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's kind of like, like the inside scoop of like the, the business, I guess, and like advice. I would say that that's a good way to think about it. Yeah, the inside scoop. And it doesn't necessarily, again, have to be about the business. It could just be more broad topics like maybe the economy. Because if you're, if you're the CEO of Nordstrom, and I don't even know if they're a publicly traded company, I think they are, but you, know, you're, you could talk about the, the financial industry and economics, and you can talk and, and be interviewed on you know, CNN business or Fox business or whatever, and you're not talking about the brand and the product and how you sell it to customers, but you're talking about, yeah, we've, you know, we've, we've changed our suppliers to be local here in the U.S., and we've changed the way that we acquire raw materials from you know, overseas, and we're doing that to help optimize our supply chain so that we can get products to customers faster. And again, it's, it's, it's thought leadership, and it's meant to, to kind of lift up all boats, not just the, the brand or the business. And I don't know if actually this should have been on here because this is not really a content format because you can do thought leadership in the form of videos, you can do thought leadership in the form of blog posts and you can do thought leadership in the form of social content. So thought leadership is more about the, the narrative of, of what it is you're, you're creating, right? It's not really like when, when I say, oh, I'm going to go create a piece of thought leadership content. The next question is, well, what, what, what's the content? Is it going to be a blog post? Is it going to be video? Is it going to be like, it's great that it's going to be thought leadership, but what is the actual output look like? Okay. All right. So I want to transition and this is, this is, I want to talk about like social listening, but before I jump into the slides, does anybody know what social listening is? When I, when I say social listening, what do you think that means? Paying attention to conversations on social media. Uh, exactly. Exactly. But it's not just on social media. Are there any Reddit users here? Really? What's your screen name? I'm just kidding. Um, I, I'm a Reddit user. I am also, does anybody here publish on uh, Amazon reviews? Like, do you ever write, does anybody write reviews on Amazon or Yelp? No one? Oh my God. You guys are, but you read them, right? Yeah. See, yeah. you guys are takers. You're not givers. You got to be givers. Contribute to the community, right? Because your opinion counts. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a giver, but I also read reviews. Um, Listening to social conversations is not just what's happening on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. It's what's happening on the internet. Now, how many, now the, the thing about social listening, and I'm going to transition a little bit to the, to the presentation here, but um, for those of you in a, in a relationship, and I'm not talking about a romantic one, I'm talking about any relationship, whether it's a family member, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a great grandfather, grandmother, mom, dad, sister, brother, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. The idea of listening is probably the most important characteristic of that relationship, right? How many times have you been in an argument with somebody that says, oh, you're not listening to me. You're just thinking about what you're going to say next, right? I do that. And, um, and, and I'll give you a quick example. So, so back, back in the day, when I was young in my marriage, I would work in, we had a, like a two-story condo, and I would work downstairs. Um, and my, with my laptop, and I would always forget my socks downstairs on the, on the living room floor. Every day, I'd forget my socks, and I'd roll them up in a ball, right? And I'd just leave them right there by the couch, and every day, my wife would say, hey, honey, um, can you do me a favor? Can you just, like, it doesn't take a lot of effort to, like, just, when you come upstairs, just bring your sock and drop it in the hamper, right? Pretty, I mean, that's not, that's an easy ask, and I would literally be looking at her, and I would be, you know, saying yes. And I'd be like, yeah, honey, for sure. And I, and, be, and part of it is because I have ADD, but I'm probably thinking about other things like work. And, and it wasn't until it got kind of bad, like meaning, you know, cause it's not a big deal, but if somebody asks you for months in a row and you never do it, you can understand that it might create some animosity. Is that right? 
You guys agree to that? Or is that, is that minor? Okay. So, and it wasn't until then when I understood that, okay, I need to start actively listening to what my wife's concerns are. And, you know, whether it was leaving the toilet seat up or leaving the toilet seat down, there's no winning in my house, obviously, because one or the other I'm getting talked to, but, or leaving cupboards open. Right. And I don't know how many times I've left the cupboard open and I hit my own head on the corner of the cupboard and it like it hurts. Right. So that's, you know, been married 20 years and I've been trained and I don't do any of that stuff anymore. But the whole point of that little story is, is that listening without action is worse than not listening at all. Okay. Now think about this from a brand perspective. Okay. How many of you are Comcast customers? Just kind of raise your hand. Comcast, internet, cable. Okay. Now, how many, those of you who are Comcast customers, how many of you dislike Comcast? Oh, only one of you. Okay. Usually it's the entire class. Maybe they're changing their brand around because they now, they are now Xfinity, by the way. So how many Xfinity do, do you guys know that Comcast is Xfinity? Okay. They've been changing their name over the last decade for a lot of reasons, but I guarantee you, if you were to go to Twitter right now or LinkedIn or Facebook and do a search for, for hate Comcast, just literally hate Comcast or Comcast sucks. You know what? Let's just do it. And by the way, guys, you know, I love Comcast. I, you know, moved to Morgan Hill and um, I, you know, I used to make fun of Morgan Hill. It was like, it was like that one city that you would go to on your way to LA to get gas. And I moved here and I love it. It's like so quiet and, um, you know, people are nice and there's not like a bunch of millennials running around. I'm just kidding. Um, but I do like Morgan Hill, uh, but I used to make fun of it. And it's funny that I, that I live here now, but being that I live in Morgan Hill, I don't have access to Comcast anymore. And I have to use spectrum. Are there any spectrum customers here? The worst internet in the world, worst cable in the world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do in Comcast sucks. Hit enter. Okay. So this was posted five hours ago. He says, I'm in the midst of an internet outage and may not be able to make stream time today. Comcast sucks, okay? This was nine hours ago. Why does Comcast suck so much, L, you know, bleep? Um, since 4 a.m., there's been an outage a and I can scroll forever, forever, okay? Um, now, this is just the top post. I didn't even click latest. What are the latest posts? You know, this was 45 minutes ago. Hey, whoever, your new 4K streaming service replacement sucks. Maybe Comcast. Okay, so this person doesn't necessarily say, they're, they're using Comcast and sucks in the same tweet, but they're not saying that Comcast sucks. Um, another thing to do is, you know, do hate. Whoops, hate, hate. So my Wi-Fi don't want to work and Jay got remote learning tomorrow and I got work, What? whatever, okay. Um, so she hates Comcast. He hates Comcast. Everybody here is hating Comcast. Let's do Spectrum. And I have a point. <laughs> this lady on the phone sounds stupid as I hate Spectrum. Okay. Now, the reality is, is that if you work for a brand, you probably see these. And if, and if, you know, and you, there are some people that you pay attention to and there's some that you don't, right? Because especially on Twitter, there's a lot of trolling and people, I, I call them keyboard warriors or keyboard ninjas. These are the people that will talk smack to you public, you know, on, on social media, but you know, they, they're the type that wouldn't, wouldn't dare say anything to your face, right? That's, that's just the nature of, of social media. And, um, and Twitter, you have the ability to uh, create anonymous content or anonymous profiles. Like you can't, it's harder to do that on Facebook and LinkedIn. So that's where you get a lot of the, the hate speech and stuff like that. So um, let's do Nike. I'm, I'm just, I've never done Nike before because I think most people love Nike, right? Okay. Now I don't know who this is. Let's see. He's a sad Eagles fan. I can understand why he's sad. So, um, but there, it looks to me like I, Love smart, but I hate how I, oh, that's weird. Let's see. Okay, so there's not a ton of negative content here, um, but airlines is a great one. <laughs> Kanye, I'm voting for him, by the way, for president, I think. Okay, well, okay, so here's one, here's one. Now, 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 now listen. 
I'm, I'm looking at hate. Let's look at love. Because social listening, now here we have Southwest, obviously, and they're going to retweet people who, who say that. Um, let's see if we can find some good content. Okay. You are, well, you are so welcome. So they're engaging with people on social media, and we love Southwest. Okay, these are some employees. This is, this is not related to the, to the airline, but it's somebody with Southwest in their profile name. Love me some Southwest. Okay, so the point of all this is that you brands need to listen to what their customers are saying for a couple of things. There's, there's crisis, there's customer support issues. In fact, Comcast many years ago launched, I think it's Ask Comcast, I think it's still that. And no, it's, um, God, what is it? Or no, it's Comcast Cares. So this is their, yes, this is their social media um, platform. And these are actually real employees who work for Comcast. And all they do is respond to people on social media, and in this case, Twitter, when people complain about outages or maybe their installer's late or their installer fell asleep on the job because that has happened before and it's been on YouTube. So, you know, so brands, smart brands like Comcast are actually using platforms to handle customer support issues. Okay. So this is, again, when you think about listening, social listening, you have the opportunity to solve customer problems. You have the opportunity to, um, you know, spot a crisis before it happens. And you also have the opportunity to, you know, g generate some brand advocacy, right? And, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of, of Southwest. So let me, in fact, let me see if those, those tweets, and I, I know they still exist because I've never deleted them. Um, I've had interactions with Southwest. Um, Okay, so 2015. Uh, so I tweeted, worried when a flight attendant says to buckle up because the captain's going to try something new, right? And I was like literally in the air, over flying over like Colorado or something. And then, um, you know, they responded and, you know, glad you were paying attention. So they, they, you know, provided some type of, and they're very funny actually when they did this. And let's see, there's been other instances where I've engaged with them. I think they, uh, let's see here. Yo, Southwest Air, let's take our relationship to the next level. Where's the best place to sit in the cabin to get the fastest Wi-Fi? I asked them that question. Sounds like things are getting pretty serious. Are you ready for that kind of commitment? You know, and I responded, it's no, it's no accident. I'm an A-lister. I'm fully committed, never shy away from my emotions. And in that case, the answer is any seat. So that was, that's an example of a, of a positive brand engagement, right? Between me, a customer, an A-lister, and that is an actual uh, status within Southwest that you get, and the brand, right? And they, they have social listening platforms, and let's get into the slides right now because I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because um, this is a very advanced way of thinking about social media, but you might be asked to, uh, you know, manage either software or a team or people, or you just might be responsible for going to, you know, manually to these platforms and, um, you know, listening to conversations and engaging. And, and let's just really talk about, and I, these are examples, I, I just showed you those examples. Um, it's the process for monitoring digital conversations. You know, what are they saying about a brand? There's also a lot of research that could, that could be involved where, you know, I, you know, if you're trying to do research on what a particular group of people are saying about a topic like, you know, uh, you know, fashion or, you know, um, a pizza or sneakers or whatever. And if you were to analyze their conversations, you can, you know, do some type of white space analysis and, you know, change your messaging. And that's again, a different probably class, but the, the, the goal of social listening is to really get a pulse of the online community and what they're saying and uh, Salesforce and in full transparency, Salesforce is a client, but they have, th these are like, look at this. Has anybody ever seen like, what does that show with Brett, Matt Damon? And I, and I love these, that series. The Born Identity, Born Identity. Has anybody ever seen Born Identity or like the five other ones? The, with, I love the CIA movies. I, that, that is my favorite genre of movies. You know, the undercover spy type movies. And there's several scenes in that show where, you know, everybody's looking for, Matt, for you know, um, 
what's his first name? Uh, Jason Bourne, right? They're looking for Jason Bourne. And they have all these guys in this room and it's the CIA and the NSA and they, they're tracking him and you see all these, you know, it's like a command center. And that's exactly what we're looking at here. This is a social media command center. And there are companies like Salesforce and others who build software for brands so that they can listen to what customers are saying on social media and respond. They have heat maps to tell you where they're, where they're located for those who have their locations turned on. It'll give you sentiment. So are the conversations positive? Are they negative? Are they neutral? And so, you know, companies are spending anywhere between, you know, I want to say 100000 a year to $500,000 a year on, on software just to manage and listen to social media conversations about their business. It's that important. In fact, there was, uh, there was many years ago, I want to say over maybe 15, year, guy full, 15 years ago, there was an instance where there was a, this blogger, and he's actually a journalist, but he was at a conference and he had a Dell computer. And he, the, the battery literally caught on fire and he had it on video. And he tweeted it, right? And um, he said something along the lines of, of Dell hell. And if you Google Dell hell, you'll see it. But that was like the, the, the calling for brands to start listening because that could have turned into a big time crisis. Imagine then if there were reports all over the US or all over a certain city where Dell computers were like blowing up or catching on fire. You know, you, as a brand and a business, you have to protect your brand. And you do that by listening and then also taking action. Um, this is just a model. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm just going to skip to this. Um, just a little bit on social media. Whenever I say social media monitoring or real-time listening or online monitoring or social media intelligence, it's basically the same thing. They're all synonymous. It's just different ways of referencing social listening, listening to social media conversations. This is an example of a dashboard of a platform called Crimson Hexagon, which is no longer around anymore. They've been acquired by Brandwatch, actually. <clears throat> and, you know, Sysimos was acquired. Let's see. Spreadfast changed their name. So all these companies are still around with the exception of Crimson Hexagon. Um, Sysimos was acquired by, I think, oh my God, Meltwater, I believe. But then you have Brandwatch. NetBase is a company actually here based in Santa Clara. Sprinkler and Meltwater is a global kind of social listening platform. And then Spreadfast changed their name to Koros. These are all like multi-million dollar companies. In fact, Sprinkler was, was recently valued at like two or five billion, something like that. And they have like a thousand employees, right? So, you know, Salesforce has, I don't even know how many employees, but they're a multi-billion dollar company. And, you know, so um, this is like real, this is real. Like social media listening is real. And the more you know about how it works, the better for you. Now, I just have like two more slides, but this is probably the most important thing that you could take away from this lecture. It's called Boolean logic, okay? And it's a way to search um, for anything and get very specific results. Because how many of us have went to Google and typed in maybe one or two or three words and got back results that weren't relevant, right? So you can actually use Boolean, Boolean logic to specify and tell Google what you want to see. So if I were to Google Apple and then type in, uh, oops, uh, Google Apple and then type in not computer, then I would most, or, or laptop, then I would get anything and everything related to Apple, the fruit. Or if I were to say Apple and not fruit, then I, would, I wouldn't see any results for fruit. Um, same thing with BlackBerry, right? BlackBerry is a, a brand, for those of you who don't know, and they're also a fruit. But it's a way to be very focused. In fact, a lot of recruiters will use Boolean logic in LinkedIn to say, I'm looking for a, um, uh, you know, let me just show you. It's the best way to do it is just real time. All right, so I'm going to go here to LinkedIn. Guys, this is a bonus right here. You're not going to get this in any university, I assure you promise you. So let's say I'm a recruiter. I'm going to look for, uh, let's see, intern, intern, well, you know, better yet, social,
There we go. I'm going to enter. Now it's going to show me now what I'm going to want to do though is I'm going to be smart and click jobs because I'm looking for a job and it's going to show me literally every internship that has social media intern in the job description somewhere. Okay. There's a ton of them. I hope you guys are doing this. So now if I wanted to get a little bit more focused, I could do this. Hold on. I'm just pulling this over, pulling over my notes here. Okay. I might do so I can see, not you. Okay. I might do social media in, in quotation marks or uh, coordinator or actually no. I would do social media or marketing or digital or social marketing because it's different than social media or um, public relations or PR. I'm going to close, I'm going to close that parentheses and I'm going to say, and coordinator or intern or internship or entry level. I'm going to close that up. So what I'm saying is, is I want to find every job description that has any of these keywords in it, social media, marketing, digital, social marketing, public relations combined with any of these keywords. So it's, if it was social media intern, social media internship, social media entry level. So then all you, so this is what's called the Boolean query or Boolean logic. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to drop it in here and hit enter. And oh, actually, hold on real quick. How many results do you see for social media? Well, hold on a second. All right. Go with me for a second. How many results do you see on this page? 700. Yes. You're watching. I was testing you. So, okay. 719. Now I'm going to, again, I'm going to approach it a little bit differently and I'm going to do what we just created. I'm going to hit enter. Now, how many do we have? 69,000. Now, obviously this is all United States. So for you specifically, I would go up here to location and I would type in Bay area. And now there's 2000 results for potential opportunities for you guys to work in social media or marketing in some capacity. Okay. This is what recruiters do all day. They may also do something like this. And SJS, whoops, let me just close the parenthesis here or open it, SJSU or San Jose State. And in this case, they're looking for, they wouldn't be looking for a job. They'd be looking for a candidate, right? So they would go here, they would hit enter and there's nothing obviously because we're looking at jobs. Uh, but what if you selected people? Let's see, maybe I didn't do this right. I'll make it less. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making it less complex because I don't want to try to figure this out, out right this second. So what I'm saying is, any combination of social media intern or social marketing coordinator and SGSU or San Jose State. Oh my God. Oh, there we go. There you go. Right. And, and what do you see? You see profile photos. You see, what, are, what is this? 
your headline. This is what recruiters do all day, all day. That's why it's important to optimize your profile. Okay. So, but it's based on Boolean query. So going back to the slides here, this is how, and this is all, once you, once you practice it, it gets very easy, but this is a great view of, of, of what I just showed you. If I was looking for Comcast or Xfinity, I would, in this particular case, I would get results that would cap, that would contain basically either or. Right, so it, if it mentions Comcast and not Xfinity, or it mentions Xfinity and not Comcast, it would show up in the results. Whether I drop it into Facebook, whether I drop it into Google search, whether I drop it into some type of social listening tool. If I did the second one, basketball shoes or sneakers, and Nike or Adidas, any combination of basketball shoes and Nike or Adidas, or sneakers and Nike and Adidas, would show up in the search results. So, there, so one is dependent on the other in this particular case. Down here, um, technology or innovation or business or Silicon Valley. So this, whoops, this right here, this last one would yield a lot of results, right? Just because you're looking for everything related to Silicon Valley. So you would, it's, I don't know why you would ever use this particular search. Uh, going up here, you know, Comcast and outage. So any mention of Comcast and outage, not necessarily sequentially. So if, if someone were to say, this damn Comcast outage pisses me off, right? That would show up. If someone were to say, hmm, I wonder if there's an outage at my local internet company called Comcast, that would show up because Comcast and outage appear in the same context. Same thing here with basketball shoes and Adidas. This would not pull in anything that, that, like if I did a search for basketball shoes and Nike, it wouldn't show up. Or if I did a search for just basketball shoes, it wouldn't show up. But if I added Adidas in the context somewhere, it would show up, okay? Now moving on down here, it's Silicon Valley and business and technology or innovation. So this is kind of, this one is a little bit more complex because what we're saying is, is we want to see any mention of Silicon Valley in business together along with technology or innovation. So if there was an article that said the top most, the, the most innovate, well, top five innovations in Silicon Valley to affect your business, that would show up or, you know, the top, and I use technology too, or, you know, what Silicon Valley is known for their business innovate and innovation, right? That would show up. Um, or if they said technology. Now, if they said Silicon Valley and business and not either of these two words, it would not show up. Okay. Um, here's another example of and not phrases, meaning you want to exclude certain keywords. In this case, we want to see apple and not fruit. So literally type that anywhere and you, you will not see anything fruit related. Here we have Nike and Adidas and basketball or shoes. Okay. So same situation here. It has to contain either of these brands and either basketball or shoes. Okay. So this is, guys, this is really complex. And I don't expect you guys to get, get this like all right now. But I'm curious if there's any questions about, about either content or social listening. Guys, this is a whole new world. Like there is so much we're not covering, but you're getting a lot. And there are teams of people who are managing these command centers list and, and partnering with customer service. And, you know, in some cases listening over, like there are companies in other parts of the world that have less expensive labor that do this for brands too, like in the off hours, like in the middle of the night, they will literally just monitor the, the social channels for anything, you know, any potential crisis or customer issue. But this is a social listening is, it could be a class taught alone in a semester. Like literally there's that, there's a lot to it. And I just really covered the basics. Okay. So um, I'm probably going to assign some reading this weekend or this week on, on more on, on social listening so that again, there get, there get some repetition in the context and probably write about it. So before we close today, I wanted to just ask anybody if they had questions about this uh, or any questions at all, just about the class. I, I want to be as, Again, I'm trying to be, you know, transparent and open with you guys and answer anything because, you know, I want you guys to be successful. I want every one of you to be successful in what you do. And so what can I do? 
to make your experience here better? Um, what feedback do you have? And you don't have to give it to me like right verbally right now. You can email it to me because um, I'm very flexible in how I teach and how I can adapt very easily. And I don't take things personal. So I'm just going to leave it there and just leave it open for anybody to, to ask a question or make a comment before we close. I have a question. Yeah. Oh yeah. So like about like the, like tagging you on LinkedIn for the posts, how would I do that? Ah, good question. How about we wait till we're done with class yeah. and, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll spend some time and I'll show you. Okay. Okay. Is there anybody, uh, anybody else have any questions? Um, oh, go ahead. My bad. Sorry, Mateo. Um, I was wondering if the page, the assignment page, would it be reopened for us to submit the URL again? Don't worry about it. Don't okay. worry about this week. Okay. I, I, honestly, it was my first time using assignments in Canvas. And I don't even know if I can access Canvas again. I, I literally logged in. I don't see it anywhere. So, um, so just next week, the, the okay. expectation is, you know, before class starts, just submit the URL. I don't, there, there's not a lot of homework in, in this class, guys. So, you know, th and I do that on purpose because I know we're busy. You guys have a lot of classes. And honestly, the majority of your learning is going to come from these discussions and like me, like real time, like what we just did. Okay. So uh, don't worry about this week's homework. But starting next week, I will just add it before class starts. Okay, sounds good. Cool. All right, awesome. So anybody? Um, yeah. Yeah, did you want me to stick around too after or do you want to set that for another time what we discussed earlier? Um we can you know what let, we can talk about it. Um I'll be really quick with Luis and then we'll we'll chat it up right after. Yeah, I can I can definitely just hang around. Don't mind.